All right, so today here on campus we did some enrichment problems on proteins. You can download this file from the course website, or if you're just watching this video online, you can pause the recording and try it for yourself and then hit resume when you're ready to see the answers. So here are problems one through five, sketching amino acids that would produce the desired interactions. There's number six, it's looking at this protein. I made that myself, aren't you proud? And I'm um, asking you to draw these particular interactions. And then number seven is explaining the levels of protein structure in your own words. So now we're gonna go over these problems here in class so that everybody has the answers. So list two amino acids that if near each other in a protein would hydrogen bond and then sketch this interaction. Now remember, these interactions are only occurring between the R groups, right? So we just need to choose amino acids that have the appropriate R groups to give us the interaction that we want. So for hydrogen bonding, what did you pick? Serine and three name would work. Yep. Let's, let's just do some other examples that would work too, right? What about tyrosine and uh, threonine, would that work? Yep. OH, OH, right? So anything that's got the OH would be good for hydrogen bonding. You could even use asparginine and glutamine, right? NH2, NH2. So you pick serine threonine. So if we're drawing that, we would have, we're only interested in the R group, right? So we would just have CH2, OH on one side, because here's the protein, and then here's the protein on the other side, and the R group here is C, and then you've got, I guess you want to draw it oriented this way, CH3, H, yeah, OH, right? So there would be our hydrogen bond, okay? And then if you were doing this one, you would just draw the tyrosine, the phenyl group, OH, and then the same as we got right here. Because again, this is only occurring between the R groups. So you don't need to draw the whole entire amino acid. All right, let's do the next one, salt bridge. What did you pick for salt bridge? What does that occur between? Right, this is acid base. Okay. Spartic and you said lysine? Yep, that would work. So again, we're only interested in the R group, so there's the protein. So you've got your CH2 and then you've got your COO minus on one side and then on the other side you picked lysine, right? So that's CH2, four, and then NH3 plus, there's your salt bridge. Do we agree? Also could have worked with glutamic acid and lysine or glutamic acid and arginine right there. As long as you've got an acid and a base, you're good to go. Good. All right, sulfide bridge. There's only one combo that works there for sulfide bridge. What is it? Two cysteines, right. So unlike the others, which are not our IMS, this one's actually a covalent bond, right? So the only thing, so you do not use your dashes, you're gonna actually use a solid line, right? Because this is a covalent bond. So if you've got a sulfide bridge, you've got S, and then a bond, and then S. Okay, this is actually a covalent bond. This is not an IMS, it's actually a covalent bond. And it only occurs between two cysteines. And let's do hydrophobic, I've got enough in here. For hydrophobic, 
What would that be? In terms of the generic, though, this is two, right, two nonpolars. So any one of these up at the top would work. Valine, leucine, isoleucine, alanine, proline, tryptophan, phenylalanine. Any of those guys would work. What did you pick? Um, I picked glycine and alanine. Glycine and alanine, okay. That is definitely the smallest. All right, so that's H and then fold it around. Yep, those two are folding in towards each other. Um, we could make something a little bit bigger, right? If you did valine and let's just say leucine, right? So you'd have CH, CH3, CH3, there's the rest of the protein. And then this folded in, basically is just one carbon longer. Right, fold it in so that all this nonpolar stuff is with each other. All right, let's go on to the next part. Sketch a protein, just do your best, that contains alpha helix. Oops. alpha helix, beta sheet, and triple helix. Now, again, I'm not expecting you to be a grand artist. I certainly am not. But let's just talk about the generic shape. If you've got a protein with an alpha helix, what does the alpha helix look like? Right, so it's just gonna be Okay, and then what's the beta sheet gonna look like? That accordion kind of shape, so let's just Remember, you can also represent it as an arrow because it's flat. And then triple helix is really tough to draw. What would it look like? It's three alpha helices braided together, right? So if you want to draw, there's one, there's two, and there's three, right? I mean, that's tough to draw. And let's loop our protein back around. And just for review, these are all stabilized by what? These are all secondary structures. Right, stabilized by hydrogen bond. Good. Good, good, good. Look at number six. Here's my protein. Let me zoom out a little bit. Draw these particular thingies. So at point A, I want a sulfide bridge. So what's that going to look like? It's just S, S, right? Trying to make that a little bit bigger so it shows up on the screen on the recording. S, S, there we go, that's a little bigger. Okay, a hydrophobic interaction at point B. So you can pick whatever you want. What'd you pick? Okay, so any sort of nonpolar, right? So this has got to be S, S. This can be two nonpolars of your choosing, doesn't really matter which one. I'm gonna do oops, six member green. Something that'll show up on the screen. 
So I did two phenylalanines, right? Anything nonpolar would work. Uh, draw hydrogen bonding at point C. So what did you pick? Tyrosine has green. Okay. Tyrosine has OH and threonine has OH. Yep. I'm going to do two serines because it's going to fit a little easier. Right? So this is anything that's got two OHs or two NH2s or OH and NH2, right? Any of those combinations would work. And then what did I ask for at point D? A salt bridge. Okay. So a salt bridge... It's going to be anything that's got acid base. So if you said, boy, that scene is where I'm supposed to be trying to draw this. Uh, CO2 minus NH3, right? Because it's the salt bridge that we're looking for there. Boy, that's hard to read. I know this, the camera's never going to pick that up. Let's just stick it. A little bit bigger. There's my hydrogen bond. There's my salt bridge. All right. If I gave you a protein and said, you know, I circled this and asked you what interaction is this, do you think you could identify that mm -hmm. by looking at the type of R group, looking at the R group, looking at the R group? Be able to do that, go the other way. Maybe I give you a protein and I say, all right, what kind of interaction is this? Well, that's hydrogen bonding. Or I give you this, oh, that's a salt bridge. Or I give you this, oh, that's hydrophobic. Right? That's a, uh, a sulfide bridge. Right? So be able to go both directions. And then last... Explain the four levels of protein structure in your own words. So, no drawing involved there. Woo. So, there are four levels of protein structure. What are they? Primary, secondary, tertiary, and quaternary. So, what's primary? Just a linear, is it's just the linear sequence, right? of amino acids. So it's literally just listing alanine, glutamine, asparginine, right? You're just listing them. Just listing them out, right? No biological activity at primary structure. What's secondary structure? What are some key words? Holding, repeating, structure. Okay, so it's repeating sub structures what do they result from what's holding it together hydrogen bonding right and there are three secondary structures what are they alpha helix beta pleated sheet and triple helix. And also keep in mind that these are localized. In other words, only affect certain regions of the protein, right? It's not the entire protein that has the secondary structure, it's just that little localized region. All right, let me give myself a little bit more room here. What's tertiary structure? No, they have biological function. Okay, so biological function achieved at this level.
What else? It means change by by R group interactions, which are, so that would be your H bonding, hydrophilic, phobic, salt bridge, and sulfide. And also, what else? Some proteins, this is where they stop, right. Primary, secondary, tertiary only, right? Because biological functions achieved at this level. And then quaternary structure, what's that? Mm -hmm. Occurs when subunits interact. It's a, a maintained by what? Same interactions as tertiary. When you say maintained by, does that mean that's what holds it together? Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's what stabilizes it. All right, and this only occurs in small proteins or large proteins? Right. Right, so not all proteins have big subunits that come together, right? Some proteins, they're good to stop just here. Right, so myoglobin versus hemoglobin is a good example. We'll look at the, um, those two when we talk about like active sites and all that stuff next week too. Good, how do we feel about this stuff though? Just the general structure of proteins. Yep, yep. I think it's pretty straightforward too. All right, well that's where we're gonna stop.